Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a great video for you today. It's back to my old ways of doing them right here on the road, wherever I'm at. And it's going to be about the Gambino crime family. Uh, 10 guys just got arrested, so they're still active and running strong. Uh, 10 guys just got indicted and arrested and indicted on racketeering for extortion of a, a carding company. I'll get into this in a minute. Uh, I think it's going to be a great video just because I think I have to highlight how it's still going on or what we used to do. And thank God I'm not there right now. Uh, first of all, thank you guys all for supporting all our sponsors. Uh, we appreciate that. Obviously, we do really good on that. Please just, uh, check out my cigar, The Crooked Diamond. You can go on any link in any of these things below, my books, all that kind of stuff. Go check them out. They really support me. The people who haven't got their cookbook yet, it is coming. Uh, obviously, we have the delays, and, and it's been very frustrating. That's all I'm going to say. And I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, myself included, because I could have did better by just staying on top of more things. With that said, let's get into this video, everybody. This video is going to be a really good video because it has to do with something that I know a lot about. And it's the extortion business. It's the muscle business. It's what I did. It's my forte of what I did in the old life. Uh, thank God I'm not in this life. But 10 guys, uh, members of the, and associates of the Gambino crime family, were arrested and accused of strong arming their way into the New York City garbage hauling and demonstration uh, demolition business. Authority said Wednesday. Now, when they say New York City, that's contractors that uh, have the contracts for the city and stuff of that nature. At least four of the defendants were accused of wielding baseball bats as part of their intimidation tactics to gain entry to the lucrative fields. Prosecutors have accused them. Wow, it's amazing they're still using baseball bats. Uh, usually the intimidation today goes a lot different, but I'm gonna even talk about what's happening now and what they're doing in prison and how they're trying to get out of this case and stuff of that nature. The men face 16 counts indictment unsealed in federal court. Obviously that's a RICO, federal uh, court makes it a RICO in Brooklyn, which includes allegations of racketeering conspiracy. I hate the conspiracy law, but racketeering conspiracy, extortion, witness retaliation, and union-related crimes uh, committed to an attempt to dominate the New York carting and demolition industries. That's the U.S. Attorney's Office. Now, the U.S. Cart the, the carting industry is the containers you see businesses have behind their business. That's a carting business. It's not so much the daily pickup of trash. That's usually city sanitation uh, in most places, but they do have contracted facilities. In where I'm in Florida, they have waste management. Uh, so in in this area, but they get contracts and stuff of that nature. No city, New York City does own its own uh, uh, sanitation, but most of the carding for businesses and everything is all private industries. As alleged for years, the defendants committed violent extortion assaults, armed arson, witness retaliation, and other crimes in an attempt to dominate the New York carding demolition industry. Alleged Gambino crime family soldier Diego Danny. Tantillo and associates Vito Rappa and uh, Kyle Twin Johnson, Twin Johnson allegedly threatened a victim in the carting business with a baseball bat and set fire to the steps of his house, damaged one of his trucks, assaulted an ass assistant, prosecutor said. Did that happen? Who knows? Obviously, that's why you have court stuff of that nature. Uh, in another indictment, Tantillo and Johnson are alleged to have coordinated a violent hammer assault on the dispatcher of a demolition company that left the victim bleeding and seriously injured, according to the government. Uh, today's arrests reflect the commitment of this office and our law enforcement partners, both here and abroad, to keep our community safe by complete dismantling of organized crime, Peace, uh, Peace said in a statement. We're going to get into that statement because I don't know if our, our uh, communities are, are safe or with or without the mob. I really don't. I'm not saying the mob is good. You guys know all of that. I, I don't play into that. But I do play into the fact that are we safer? Are cops really safer? Are we, you know, are we safer? I don't know, guys. I really don't. Uh, the list of suspects were topped by Joseph Lanny, also known as Joe Brooklyn, or Mamino, or an alleged Gambino captain. I don't know any of these guys. Alleged Camino soldiers uh, Angelo Fifi, uh, Grandoline, and James Lafort also face charges. Francisco Uncle Chico, Vicari, Salvatore Di Lorenzo, Robert Brooke, and Vincent Vinnie Slick 
Mitsquaro were also implicated. So now you got a lot of people being implicated in this. We know that, right? Okay. He, uh, the defendants are accused of helping one another to various benefits in the form of no-show jobs and brought pay and union benefits, officials said. Now, that, that's common. Uh, I, that's so common. And, uh, I mean, they're really nitpicking to get these guys now, uh, if, in my opinion here. The defendants are accused of helping one another. He was merely charged, uh, this one defendant, he, this is his attorney speaking, he was m merely charged with relatively isolated, tiny business dispute, completely unrelated to the RICO conspiracy, and we intend to prove he is completely innocent of any alleged violent extortion related to this. To claim extortion, anyone is utter nonsense. <coughs> I'll tell you what makes me laugh here. All I keep seeing is legal fees. I know that's crazy, right? I keep seeing legal fees. And I know they're going to be a lot. And I don't know the attorneys are uh, handling these cases. So uh, listen to me. Best attorneys will win. DiLorenzo was released after he posted half a million dollar bond. That's a quite a sum of bond. Uh, and, and it's not the biggest. Lini, uh, Lani, Johnson, Gradola, and Tetio remain in custody Wednesday night. Rappa, Minsquero, Brook, and Vic Vicari were all granted release on $1 million bond. Uh, each, but their releases were stayed 24 hours. The government is allowed to stay. It means they were held for 24 hours while the government appeals their release. I can't stand that because in the United States Constitution, you have a right to a reasonable bail. I don't know if a million dollars is reasonable, uh, but a reasonable bail. And the only two reasons you don't get bail is if you are a threat to the community or you're a flight risk. I don't see that in either of these cases because I don't see how much time they... Listen, you can face a lot of time. But whether you get it or not is another thing. Uh, despite the government's insistent defendants should be remanded pending trial, the judge rejected their argument. Thank you, judge. Rapper's attorney, Wayne, said he refused to simply take the government at its word. Mr. Rapper will hold the government to its burden, vigorously litigate the case in court. Legal fees, legal fees, legal fees. All the defendants who appeared in court on Wednesday pled not guilty. Uh, Mr. Mesquera completely denies these allegations, Mesquera's attorney, Louis Galarmo, said. He is looking forward to complete investigation and expects to be fully immediate. Lafort was not arraigned Wednesday because he is in jail in Pennsylvania and will be arraigned later. It was not clear Wednesday night if he has a lawyer in this matter. I'm sure he will, or if he don't, he will. Uh, let me explain all the aspects of this case and these guys. First of all... Uh, What's happened now? Once you get arrested, you either get to get a bond, not you get to have bail hearings. If you don't get a bond or they try to refuse it, you should have a bail hearing. That's very important because you learn a little bit more what the government has, who they're looking into. It could be somebody else, stuff of that nature. Very important you do that. That's important. Uh, they're doing that. It seems like these guys aren't rookies. Uh, they know what I know, but I know a little bit more because of where I went, what degree I got while I was in. With that said, these guys are in jail. They're coordinate. They're going to hopefully, hopefully nobody flips. The government is trying to flip somebody. I can guarantee that. They are trying to flip one of these guys to say, yes, we were told in a meeting, don't go. We got this guy on the hook or whatever it is. Where the big charge comes from is the threat of violence or violence. And of course, assaulting somebody if they can prove that. And then they can. And if they can prove that it was over this, let me explain what I mean by that. Listen, just because a guy gets assaulted or uh, something happens, it doesn't mean it's related to this case. Who knows? Was the guy a gambler? Did he owe a lot of money? Did he owe it to somebody else? They're going to look into all this. The investigators on these cases for the defense are going to look into the character and everybody associated with this case in a way where the judge is going to say, wait a minute, or a jury will say, wait a minute. You're accusing this guy of doing this because of the garbage business. But in fact, he really owed, you know, 20 grand on a, on a gambling debt. He's a degenerate. He beats women. He beats somebody's sister or daughter or something of that nature. Doesn't make anything right. I'm not promoting violence in any way. But that's the way the law works. So uh, you can't just arrest people. Now, the government and the feds usually don't arrest you without really looking into a case. But they make mistakes like anybody else. They want to keep these organized crime task force going. They want to keep the money flowing from the federal government into these agencies so they can keep their jobs, really. Uh, this does not seem like a case that would, would even be brought up back in my day. Uh, they were always going after the mob bosses who were doing a lot more business. 
in my day, what would happen was uh, they would obviously try to go up the ladder. Now, no-show jobs, I don't even know what the charge is on a no-show job. You're getting, you know, under the RICO Act, people think, oh, they're charged with RICO. They're going to jail for 20 years. No. Under the RICO Act, there's what they call predicate acts. There's like, uh, mine was armed robbery to promote RICO. It's under the RICO Act. There's armed robbery. There's arson. There's murders. There's, I am assuming a no-show job has to be under that RICO Act somewhere. Now, racketeering influence corruption organization has to have something serious behind it. Because you give a guy a no-show job, one has to be proved. Two, who else do they get? Well, how are they giving the mob guys that? Now, are they benefit? How a RICO works is the person who gets uh, a diet under the RICO has to be making money from that. So let's just say I'm in a crew and uh, I say to somebody, hey, listen, come in. You got a guy who can't work. Just let me put him on the books. Let him put on no show. He gets a check every week. And we'll try to help him out and get him, you know, to stay here because he maybe needed a green card or whatever. He needed a job. He needed to pay his family. So you, as a businessman, want to give him the job instead of just giving him money because you can't claim that. Now you can at least claim that you're paying somebody. He has to pay the taxes. You know, you'd think the government would say, you know, that's not, okay, just let it happen because we're making taxes. We're paying Social Security. He's, he's doing something. He's putting money into the community. But no, they have to just go after every petty little thing. You know, it's amazing what the government themselves do and get away with. But God forbid a, uh, a businessman does something like give a friend a job, a really no-show job. They make it sound like, hey, he's putting everybody on the payroll. And, uh, you know, no, the guy's got to have a business. Yes, can he have no-show jobs? I don't even know what the law is on a no-show job. And if that's all they got, that's a pretty weak Rico. Did they just do this whole entire raid, this 10 guys from the Gambinos for uh, publicity, for headlines, for... Listen, the, you think the paper... Why does the paper, why does international papers pick this up? Because it says Gambino crime family. Uh, now, uh, is the Gambino crime family doing other things? I don't even know, and I don't care. Uh... Are they doing jewelry robberies by way of Larry Lawton? Absolutely not. Are they making money off other guys? Who knows? Uh, but let's get some evidence that they're doing something serious. Like, uh, you know, how about political corruption? How about uh, lobbyists who do this? How about lobbyists who go to Congress and pay off congressmen to get votes? Why don't we start investigations on that and call that something else? How about the government, you know, again, being about the government family? or whatever you want, a congressional family. There's so much shit that goes on. Now, let's get back, where well, I'm not gonna make meat of this, is the uh, the case of, the, uh, of, of beating up a guy with a hammer. Listen, if they're extorting a the guy, <laughs> it wouldn't happen in my day. Meaning, one time that would happen and then every other witness would never do that again. I'm just saying, I, I don't ever promote it now, obviously. But for whatever reason, they're not conveying the message good enough that, hey, listen, if you go to the police on this, you know, you can forget the little crap that's happened. Now, are they getting emboldened by the, the mob being, uh, uh, how, how, a better way to say it, stupid, uh, not having the brains and not getting into the crimes that make a lot of money? Yes, they're into the no-show job. They're the carding business makes a lot of money. Uh, but are they going to have a bunch of people who own businesses come forward? and say, hey, uh, these guys have been doing this. We did it. I personally did that way back in the day where I used to go to, you know, to accounts and they used to increase their accounts by intimidation or manipulation. And then you increase a route $5 every pickup and they have two pickups a week and you got 500 houses or 1,000 houses. And that's, that's $10,000 a week. Yeah, two, uh, two pickups that you know, add them five dollars. Five dollars. You got a thousand accounts at five dollars. That's five thousand dollars. And you do that twice a week. That's ten thousand dollars a week. Forty thousand dollars a month. You are increasing somebody. And then, now you're talking about a business that you already got. Now, let's face facts, guys. If you weren't picking up the trash, you weren't doing a good job. You wouldn't even have that job. Whoever it is. Uh, again, I'm not defending the mob. I am. Just explaining how the actual world works. 
these guys are indicted. I bet money, and I'm going to try to look into it, but I'll bet money you're not going to hear anything about this case because it's so small. Uh, I'm not hearing about any underbosses uh, or a boss of a family being indicted because let me tell you what happens. If the Gambino family's involved, then there's alleged captain, I, I don't know who he is, the alleged captain of this crew and this guy's the bunch of soldiers are doing that, they're kicking upstairs as well. So if the government can't follow that money, because normally they would indict the boss, the underboss, anybody who's making money on this case. That was the commission case. They they proved and, and they put a lot of guys away back in the day because they proved they were head of families making money from Ill illegal illegal activities of underlings. They knew about it. They gave the order to do it. Any, listen, in the mob, you don't you don't get an operation this big and then not kick upstairs, number one. So everybody above that captain, he's kicking to somebody. He's not just his own man. He's not his own crew and they're all making their own money. And the boss is saying, hey, have a good time. Uh-uh, that doesn't happen that way. Uh, so obviously somebody's making a lot of money as well. And if they're not doing that, that means that they didn't look into it long enough or deep enough or it's all bullshit and they're just using names. Uh, now, if a guy gives a guy a present, and the guy comes in and says, hey, man, I ain't seen you in a while. Here's a thousand bucks because things are going good. We're doing this little thing. That's not, you know, again, even that guy, where does he get, why is he getting indicted? That means it's not, he's not ordering it. And he's not involved in the, see, they said racketeering conspiracy. That's why I hate conspiracy. Because if anybody out there is in my office, right, in this RV with me right now, and we uh, happen to uh, do something illegal, uh, talk about uh, something illegal and the government comes in on that finds that you're talking with me about it you say I don't want to do it to me but they don't know that I go out and I rob a jewelry store you're in, you're in the conspiracy if, if we get caught they can say you knew about it you didn't do anything you didn't tell anybody you were part of it you helped plan that such bullshit not many countries even have a conspiracy I don't think any do you prove somebody prove they did a crime and get them come on Conspiracy is is just a very, very murky waters. The RICO is very murky, and they're not using the RICO in the right way. They're using the RICO in Atlanta, Georgia, against rappers. They're using the RICO now against little one-hit wonder crimes, whether it's a little extortion on on the uh, carting business or the uh, demolition business. I don't buy it. I think this is a bunch of hype. I think these guys are going to all you get very little sentences or probation. I hope they don't flip and then start telling them about other bullshit crimes. Maybe they're doing a little crap, whether it's bookmaking or loan shocking or whatever. You know, you think the government has more important things to worry about. Like, how about Hamas and Israel and all, all the uh, terrorist attacks going against Israelis around the United States right now? How about a whole bunch of other crap that goes on? So don't tell me you can do that and that and that, because you're not doing one right. I can tell you that. Well, I think you get my rant. I'm still, listen, I went away for not telling uh, and I and I, I hope these guys don't tell. I hope these guys just stay strong. They're not getting big sentences. I don't know their records. Even with records, this is, does not sound like some mega crime. They didn't say any one or two people beat these guys. And the other guys who did that didn't do that. And maybe they got a no-show job or going to get probation, if anything, if they're convicted. So I just think there's a lot more bullshit going on here. And you know what? Shame on you, government. Get a case, bring it. Don't bring this bullshit. This is just a waste of time and a headline grab. Well, I think you know how I feel on this case. Stay tuned for the next one because I'm back to reading, watching, doing what I do best. And that's following and helping you guys understand the real implications of this stuff. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe. Much love, much respect to you guys. And I'll see you soon.